I heard the story, yeah, he'd met Jim and met him at a bar one night and next thing Jim was living at the house and Jim was the gardener. We, we loved each other, I mean, might, might not have been the most, most conventional of loves, you know, um, but yes we did. Freddie meeting up with Jim happened at the best time possible. Because you look at the performance on Live Aid and you see Freddie so full of energy. Freddie is bubbling. Freddie looks huge. And part of that is Jim's emotional input. I first saw him perform at Live Aid. I was just dazed. It, it's basically me saying, that's my man there. Interview with Freddie Mercury in 1986 at Freddie's home in Kensington, London. Never uh, judge a book by its cover. So I mean, it's like... Um, so you're interested in people that got something to offer? Yes, it doesn't matter where they came from. And there are other things besides actually just being seen out with a, a, a superstar on each shoulder. Mm. Mm. So what you're really saying is that it's more important for you to, when you've got away from the, uh, from the spotlight, and the stage is to ha is to try and develop some personal relationship with someone because you've got into that relationship. You? <laughs> <laughs> anybody would want that. I mean, everybody wants a. Um, you're saying that everybody wants a, 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 a lovely relationship, and at the same time, go out and have fun. Mm. Basically, mm. Well, we want that. You know, both ways. Mm. But the moment, for me, at the moment of time, I'm quite, I'm quite happy just coming home and um, you know, sort of uh, tickling my peonies. And it's just. <laughs> They're not out. <laughs> That's why I'm tickling them. <laughs> you shrewd thing, you know. Has wealth and fame brought you happiness? It's brought me contentment at the moment, yeah. I'm very content. You look at me, yes. Yeah, I am. I'm very content. I'm <clears> very... <throat> it's not what I thought I, I would uh, be happy with. So it's like, you know, I mean, you always sort of have a go in terms of happiness, in terms of love, in terms of... But I, I quite like it. It's something that I had to sort of um, come to terms with, if you know what I mean. Which is completely new to me. Like, I mean, you always sort of think, this is the goal I want, and you strive for that. And suddenly, for me, I think I've been sort of pushed in a, at a tangent. And suddenly I feel, OK, this is where I am, and you have to sort of make the best of it. Does that make sense? It's No. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I mean, you, you have your ideals or whatever in terms of, OK, I'll, I'll be honest, but in terms of love and everything, I always thought they would be this way. and and. The, in in term in, in that area, I've tried and tried and I've failed, and suddenly I've just been uh, put in a different direction, where I feel that's where I, I um, my happiness lies. Rather than sort of have a one-to-one -one basis, I don't I don't think that's that's what um, I feel I'm going to get out of my life. Where I have a complete one-to-one, -one. I, I feel that I can have a one-to-one -one thing with a lot of people around. This is what what I think is 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 going to be. Your life. Yeah, my life, and I think I have to come to terms with it, and I'm... If you tell yourself that that's what's going to be, then you have to just... Then you just let the steam off one end and just say, fuck, it's not going to happen that way. Do it here we're here, and, 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 and you know, mm. and don't get so tangled up, and, and mm. otherwise you're just going to lose out. You're going to be dropped dead one day and say, oh, my God. Mm. I am, honestly, quite content. I really am.